Ever wondered what Alzheimer's disease is and why it affects so many people around the world? Alzheimer's disease, or AD, is a condition characterized by a progressive cognitive decline that interferes with both social and occupational functioning. Imagine being unable to learn new information, experiencing language disturbances, having impaired ability to carry out motor activities despite intact motor function, or failing to recognize or identify objects despite intact sensory function. These are the cognitive disturbances associated with Alzheimer's. Now that we know what Alzheimer's disease is, let's delve deeper into its pathophysiology. To understand Alzheimer's disease we must first understand its pathophysiology. The development of Alzheimer's involves a combination of genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. However, less than 7% of cases are familial, or linked to specific genes. These include the amyloid precursor protein on chromosome 21, presenilin 1 on chromosome 14, and presenilin 2 on chromosome 1. Additionally, the E4 polymorphism of a protein E has been identified as a susceptibility genotype, with E2 offering some protection. The physical changes in the brain associated with Alzheimer's are equally important. Gross pathology often reveals diffuse cortical atrophy, especially in the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes. On a microscopic level we see the formation of senile plaques, which are extracellular deposits of amyloid in the gray matter of the brain. There's also a loss of synapses, the development of neurofibrillary tangles within neurons, and a reduction in cholinergic neurons in the nucleus basalis of Minert that project to the frontal cortex. Meanwhile, biochemical pathology reveals a 50 to 90 percent reduction in the action of choline acetyltransferase, an enzyme involved in the synthesis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which plays a crucial role in memory and learning. The pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease is complex but, understanding it helps us better comprehend the disease's progression. But who is at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and how common is it really? Alzheimer's disease is no stranger to our elderly population. Roughly 1 in 12 individuals aged between 65 and 75 are diagnosed with this cognitive disorder. This number jumps dramatically to 1 in 3 for those aged over 85. In fact Alzheimer's accounts for 60 to 80 percent of all dementia cases worldwide. Now let's talk about risk factors. Age is the most potent one. But a family history of Alzheimer's also increases your chances of developing this disease. Other risk factors include smoking, head injuries, and a low level of education. Interestingly, individuals with Down syndrome are also at a heightened risk. The risk factors for Alzheimer's disease are numerous and varied, emphasizing the importance of early detection and prevention. So how can we identify Alzheimer's disease? What are the signs and symptoms, and what investigations can be done? Alzheimer's disease, or AD, presents itself through a variety of cognitive, psychiatric, and motor manifestations. The most common cognitive impairment is an early memory impairment for newly acquired information. As the disease progresses, deficits in language, abstract reasoning, and executive function may appear. Psychiatric manifestations can also occur. These include major depressive disorder, occurring in 5 to 8 percent of patients, and psychosis, which can affect up to 20 percent of patients. A noticeable characteristic is apathy, a lack of interest or concern, which can be particularly distressing for loved ones. Motor manifestations, such as Parkinsonism, usually occur in the late stages of Alzheimer's disease. If these symptoms appear, it might be necessary to consider other diagnoses, such as dementia with Lewy bodies. Now, let's talk about the investigations that can be conducted to rule out other causes of dementia. An electroencephalogram, or EEG, is often used, although the results are usually normal. However, in some cases it may show generalized slowing, which is not specific to Alzheimer's disease. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, can reveal preferential atrophy of the hippocampi and prequinius of the parietal lobe. It can also show the dilation of lateral ventricles and the widening of cortical sulci, which are characteristic of Alzheimer's. Single photon emission computed tomography, or SPECT, can be used to identify hypoperfusion in the temporal and parietal lobes. These imaging studies can provide valuable information to support the diagnosis. Remember, the four A's and one D of Alzheimer's are anterograde amnesia, aphasia, apraxia, agnosia, and disturbance in executive function. At least anterograde amnesia plus one of the other features are required for an Alzheimer's diagnosis. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease is crucial for early detection and treatment. So, we've identified Alzheimer's disease. What next? How can we treat it? 
When it comes to treating Alzheimer's disease, one of the first lines of defense is a group of drugs known as acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. These include donepezil, rivastigmine, and galantamine. These drugs have been shown to slow the decline in cognitive function, meaning they can help patients maintain their memory and thinking skills for a longer period of time. However, they do have some relative contraindications, such as bradycardia, heart block, arrhythmia, congestive heart failure, coronary artery disease, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, ulcers, or risk factors for ulcers and gastrointestinal bleeding. Specifically, galantamine is contraindicated in patients with hepatic or renal impairment. Another drug that can be used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease is memantine. This drug is an NMDA receptor antagonist and has shown some benefits in later stages of Alzheimer's, particularly when the mini mental state examination score is less than 17. In addition to these medications, symptomatic management of Alzheimer's disease is also crucial. This can involve the use of low-dose neuroleptics for agitation, trazodone for sleep disturbances, and antidepressants. While there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease, these treatments can significantly slow its progression and improve the quality of life for those affected. Alzheimer's disease is a complex and widespread condition that affects millions worldwide. This progressive cognitive decline is characterized by anterograde amnesia and other cognitive disturbances. Its pathophysiology involves genetic factors and distinct pathological changes in the brain. The disease is prevalent among the elderly and is influenced by various risk factors. Its manifestations vary from cognitive impairment to psychiatric and motor symptoms. Investigations are crucial for diagnosis, and treatment options aim to slow cognitive decline. By understanding Alzheimer's disease, we can contribute to early detection, effective management, and ultimately, a better quality of life for those affected.